Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kamil Kuzmiak and in today's episode I'm gonna show you how to replace the battery in your 13-inch 2015 Retina MacBook Pro. Let's get to it. Okay, we have our rubber gloves on, so we can start the procedure. We have our blowing tool, we have the screwdriver from iFixit that has all of the necessary bits. We have this little prying tool that we can use to remove the old glue after we remove the battery. We have the prying tool from iFixit. Don't use anything sharp, don't use anything metal because at all costs you have to avoid piercing the battery because um, that could possibly uh, result in a fire or a explosion. We have our little toothbrush to clean the inside of the computer a little bit and we also have this little tweezers we also have the adhesive removal from iFixit that uh, we are going to use to dissolve the adhesive underneath the battery to make our job a little bit easier. If you don't use the iFixit kit, you can use some 95% isopropyl alcohol. It should do the trick and you can use some syringe to precisely applicate the alcohol underneath the battery. We have our protective glasses. I recommend to wear them. They came with the iFixit kit as well. Okay, and this is our brand new battery that we are going Going to install in the computer today. Also I have this little box that used to house some drill bits and some bolts and I will use it to organize my screws. We are going to put some aluminum foil on the screen to protect the protective coating on the screen against the alcohol uh, in case of any accidental spillage. So let me just do it right now. So I'll just open the computer and always remember to drain the battery to 0%, so run some Netflix movie, wait uh, until it discharges completely, and then try to start the computer a couple times to make sure that it's absolutely 0%, and that makes the whole procedure much safer. Now we can take our P5 screwdriver and unscrew all of the 10 screws that are holding the case back to the chassis. Remember that those two screws next to the hinge are the shorter ones so you can keep them separately and remember to put the short screws in the middle next to the hinge. So you take your iFixit screwdriver, you open the cap and you have all the other bits inside. So we need to grab the P5 screwdriver just remember to press on it when you unscrew it because if the battery is inflated there is a lot of pressure inside so the case back can just pop out and then your screw will catapult somewhere and maybe you're gonna lose it so make sure to press on the case slightly okay as you can see the case back is opening already that's because of the pressure i just wanted to show you that i also have this metal baking tray from the kitchen just in case there is any fire or smoke or anything like this, I will just put the laptop into the tray and then I can just take it out of the house and extinguish the fire with some sand. But hopefully we're not gonna get any issue like that today. It's good to put the computer on something instead of the table so you don't scratch the top cover. I used a piece of carpet for it. Okay, remember that those two screws are the shorter ones, so you need to put them separately. It's always important to put the same screws in the same places, because otherwise sometimes you can break your device. Now we can see the inside of the computer, also the case is quite dirty. Let's clean it a little bit with the paper towel. The most important thing you need to do first is disconnecting the battery to make the repair safer. So the connection of the battery is right here. So you take your plastic prying tool and you can put it underneath and pry on it a little bit and then use your fingers to yank it out. And as you can see, now the battery is disconnected. After you disconnect the battery, important thing is to press the power button for 15 seconds to make sure that all the remaining power in the components is drained. So let me just open it and press 1, 2, 3, 18, 19, 20. Okay, now we should be sure that we can work on the computer safely. Ok, 
Okay, as you can see, the battery is quite swollen. The case was bulging and also the, the top cover, the screen was not closing properly. Now we're gonna have to remove the speakers and remove the trackpad cable. Switch to the T5 screwdriver to remove all of the speaker screws. Remember to organize them and keep them separately because they may be different sizes. Yeah, so you definitely need to segregate them because all of them are different sizes so they are the same, those are the same and those are the same. So I just put them in three separate categories. Okay, so we're gonna start with removing the right speaker so you need to basically lift it up from this side. You need to, you need to get that cable out of the way. Be delicate not to break the cable. Okay, and now we can take our pry tool, put it underneath. All right, so our speaker is out now, we can put it on the side. Okay, so with the other one, we are not gonna completely disconnect it. To make it slightly more easier, we're just gonna kind of get it out of the way. So let me just put it up slightly. Okay, and then you need to be careful not to damage this cable, it's held by the adhesive and then you can put it on the side like this. The speaker is out of the way, we have all that access from both sides and then we're gonna be able to put it back afterwards. Okay, so now using the T5 screwdriver again we can remove that plate that's protecting the trackpad cable over here. So again remember to put those screws separately. Now we can gently remove that plate, put them with the screws. Okay, so now we can pop off the trackpad connector. Then you can lift it up. Be careful because sometimes it's sticking to the battery. So avoid using too much force. You don't want to rip it out of this uh, circuit board. So then you need to put that little plastic tab up and there is a little latch. You need to use your fingernail to put that latch up. If you can't do it with your fingernail, you can use the pry tool. Okay, the latch went up and now hold the cable and gently pull it out. Sometimes you need to wiggle it a little bit, but yeah, now trackpad cable is out. We can put it on the side. We have this last screw holding the battery to the motherboard. Uh, so we can use the T5 screwdriver to remove that last screw. It's over here, I, I hope you can see that correctly. Well, there we have it guys, that's all the screws we need to remove. As you can see, I have them neatly organized in my little box. I will close the box to avoid mixing them by accident. And now the most annoying part, which is ungluing the battery so we can rip it out and put the new battery in. Before I use any adhesive removal liquid, let me just pry on the side to see if the battery is holding very strong. So now we have all this access here. I'm gonna use the card that I cut before. When I cut the card, I made this corner round, so it's not sharp, so it's not gonna pierce the battery. I can feel already that the glue is quite strong, so I will probably use a couple drops of the adhesive removal liquid to dissolve the glue a little bit. So let me just pop the bottle open and very gently put a couple drops and lift the computer so it goes underneath the battery. Let me try if now it's a little bit easier. The thing is you need to use force but you need to be gentle at the same time. It's going under better now. The card is cutting the adhesive. Okay, it's almost up. We want to be very careful not to break the battery. Okay, it looks like this first cell is completely disconnected. And now we can do the same on the other side. Let's wait a couple seconds for the adhesive to start dissolving a little bit and we can go in with our card working our way in. Okay, now 
the cell is free so two of the side cells are free now we can move it a little bit out of the way and now we can continue removing the second set of cells let me check if i'm able to go in without the liquid yeah, it's quite hard let me put some more liquid then let me try to put those batteries out of the way a little bit just like that i can go underneath with the liquid let me clean that spillage. Let it drip down underneath the battery and let's wait. Okay, so now let me go under with my tool and let's check. Okay, it looks like the adhesive is cutting now nicely. Always go that way, that's safer for the motherboard. Let me try to go from this side a little bit. Okay. Okay, let me try to use the wider card. Okay, let's check if we can lift the battery up now. There is a bit more adhesive holding underneath. Let me put slightly more liquid over there. So I received that adhesive removal with the first battery I changed in my computer, this is my girlfriend's computer. I didn't even use half of it, so it's very efficient. I fix it, make sure that you have enough. Okay, it looks like we have another cell off. That's perfect. So now we can repeat the same procedure on the other side. Be careful not to put any liquid on the speakers because it can dissolve plastic. Let's check if I can cut the glue. Okay, now it's cutting. Okay. Okay, remember never use anything sharp and never pry on it. Always try to slide something underneath to cut the glue. You just want to cut the adhesive. You don't want to cut the actual battery layers. Perfect. We have all the side cells free. So now the most delicate part is removing the middle one. Because it's close to the motherboard, that's why it's slightly more tricky. And also it's connected to the trackpad and we don't want to put too much force because we don't want to break the trackpad because it's made of glass. So uh, we need to be careful with that one. I don't know if you can see, but there is this raised metal here and then this black thing is the trackpad. Basically you need to go between this black thing and the battery over there. That seems to be holding quite strong. Probably I'm gonna have to use the floss method for this one. I will try to pull on that plastic frame a little bit. Let me put some adhesive removal in the middle. Okay, let me wipe off the excess. Okay, and now let me try to go from the side. holding quite strong it doesn't want to give up let me try to go from the middle a little bit okay that seems to be easier because of the liquid so let me loosen it up slightly in the middle okay let me try to go in very delicately with the pry tool. The patience is key, you need to be patient, you shouldn't rush it. Okay, so let me try to use the floss method. So we're gonna take a little bit of 
regular dental floss. Maybe you can use a strong thread from like the leather shop or something like that if you have access to something like that. Okay, so let's try to get the dental floss underneath our battery. I think we're gonna get it underneath the entire frame. So we're gonna lift up this connector and we're gonna put the floss underneath here. And now we're gonna go around and we're gonna try to get the floss underneath that frame here. We're gonna use the, the pry tool to push it in. Okay, now the floss is underneath the battery and we can start flossing. I can see the floss in the middle. It's here now and let's not use too much force, but I can see the floss is moving. Now it's in the middle, so it means that it's cutting the adhesive quite nicely. I think that adhesive removal that I put in the middle of the battery dissolved the glue a little bit. I don't use too much force. I'm just being consistent with it. I can see it's moving slower now, but I'm definitely cutting into the adhesive. All right, I think we are almost done. Now let me try to pick up the frame a little bit. The battery is still holding at the bottom. We don't want to pry on it because we don't want to break the trackpad. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the card and we're gonna try to go from the side and to cut the adhesive from the side like this. Okay. It's holding on quite strong over there. Just be careful not to break that circuit board because we don't want to break the trackpad. Let me try to floss it a little bit more. Let me try to, to slightly pry on it, just ever so slightly to, to see if it's letting go or not. Okay, I can hear it's ungluing, so the right side is free now. We can take the floss around, so we have it on the one side. Just gently make sure that it's not touching and maybe we can cut the adhesive from the side like this. Okay. I will try to use the card from the side again to cut that last part. Okay, let me try if I can pick it up now. Okay, that's a success. We can remove the battery. The battery, as you can see, is in one piece, which is a great news because that means that we remove the battery very safely. So now we can put it in our metal tray. It is important to put the used battery in the metal tray because if it would catch fire now, I can just take it outside of the house, I can put some sand on it and we are absolutely safe. So now the most annoying part is removing all that old glue. We need to get all of that cleaned so then we can take the new battery, we can put it in. To be honest, uh, you could skip that part and you could glue the battery to that old glue However, it's quite important for the battery to be glued in properly and touching the metal sashi properly because that way when the battery gets hot, it's transferring the heat into the sashi and that's like the part of the MacBook cooling system. So it is important actually to remove all that glue and to uh, clean it nicely. Let's take our iFixit tool, the blue one, and let's start to peel the, the big pieces of adhesive. If you are lucky, you can remove them in one piece. That makes the process much easier. Okay, we're gonna have to put some adhesive removing liquid on that big patch of glue. And let's work with it. Okay, so let's try the paper towel method. We take a piece of paper, we, we put it on the area and then we put some liquid on top of it. We let it soak. After it's soaked, we can start cleaning.
so the paper towel is absorbing the glue because it's soaked in the adhesive removal it will use more of the liquid that way but it's quite efficient okay so now we can use the tool again to scrape some of that more stubborn stuff off it's not very difficult but it just requires a lot of patience Okay, let's put some more towel on, let's put some more liquid. Okay, now let's use the cotton swab to clean the corners. We can put a little bit of the liquid on the cotton swab and you can go into the corners and nicely get all the sticky stuff off. Let me put some of the liquid here at the corner. Looks like that side is sparkling clean, so now we need to do the other side and then at the end we're gonna do the trackpad because that's the most delicate part of it. I'm using quite generous amounts and I still have like half of the bottle left so I think it would be good for like maybe three or four laptops so if you want to change the battery in multiple computers you can buy one iFixit repair kit with the liquid and the tools and then for other computers you can just buy the battery by itself because the liquid from one kit will last for all of the computers like three or four I think If there is some stubborn bit of glue, you can leave the towel with the adhesive remover for a minute or two to let the chemicals do the work and let it dissolve a little bit more. And then you can go in with the tool. Just don't use too much force because there is the screen underneath. You don't want to put too much pressure on your screen. It needs a little bit of elbow grease. Remember the cleaner it is the better the new battery gonna stick in. Looks like the right side is squeaky clean. So now we can remove all the glue from the main part from the trackpad and then we're gonna be able to put the new battery in finally. With the middle part we don't want to use too much alcohol because there is screw holes here and we don't want too much liquid to go inside of the screws and to possibly damage the trackpad. We're gonna use the paper towel method. That way the towel will absorb most of the liquid and that way we won't pour too much liquid into the screw holes. Let it sit for a minute, let it work its magic and dissolve the glue a little bit. You can tap it gently with your fingers and now let's wipe it a little bit and let's use the tool to start scraping the big chunks. Be extra careful not to put too much force because there is a glass trackpad underneath. Be careful not to pour any of the liquid on the electronics. It's super annoying, it was way easier in my other laptop. I was lucky enough to be able to scrape it off in big chunks, but this one is gonna be a bit more work. Let me try to dissolve a little bit more and put some liquid 
directly on the plate, just not too close to the screw holes. Now I will try to use the towel to remove it little by little. Let's put some more liquid on. Let's start rubbing. This way the glue is absorbing into the paper. Try to scrape it a little bit now. I'll try to use the cloth now. Maybe cloth is gonna be a little bit better than paper to absorb all that stuff. And we'll put some liquid on the cloth. It looks like this cloth is so much better than the paper because it's not tearing so much. As you can see, it's absorbing the glue nicely. So I will be doing section by section. Okay, that works much better. I'm just gonna move my finger to get the piece of fresh cloth every time. I will be putting liquid on the cloth just like this and using my finger to collect the glue just like that. I'll put some liquid directly on the glue and let it sit for a second. Scraping tool a little bit. Get the cotton swab to clean that bit. Okay, let's do a little bit of the scraping work here. Okay. Okay, we are making some progress, but obviously there is a long way to go. Battery transfer itself, it's not that difficult. The most difficult is scraping off that glue. Removing the battery is quite tricky, but I think removing the glue is actually most of the times the most annoying part. But yeah, it looks much better now. Let me use the cloth again. I will take the clean portion of it, wrap it around my finger like this, and I will put some liquid on the tip of my finger and I will gently rub it in. Be careful if you come close to that electronics, then just use the cotton swab. Let's put a little bit more of the solution here. Oh no, we need to use the towel because a little bit too much went over here. Okay, so now let's use the paper towel method again and put some liquid on the towel. Let it soak in a little bit and then you can start cleaning again. Let me use the cloth again because maybe it's gonna be better with, yeah, it's much better with the cloth. Before I said that the liquid could last for two or three laptops, but now I think it will last for two laptops. It could last for three or four if this middle section would be less annoying. And then sometimes if you're lucky, the adhesive is peeling off in the big chunks and then it's easier to remove it quickly. But this one is super annoying. I'm gonna have to put some liquid on that big chunk of glue to break it a little bit. I will focus on breaking all the strong chunks of glue and when that's done then I will be focusing on just cleaning the plate. I think the best method is using the scraping tool and then taking it off with the towel when it's still soft. You need to be careful with that liquid because the iFixit bottle, it's not very subtle. It's better to use like a syringe or something because then it's not squirting so much. We're gonna wipe it off a little bit. I changed my gloves in the meantime so it would be good if you get more than one pair because in iFixit kit you get just one pair of gloves. It would be better if they gave you like a couple pairs of gloves because they get so sticky and dirty with that glue. It's good to change them in the middle of the job. It would be better if you would buy like the full pack of the rubber gloves. It looks like we are almost done and the remover liquid is also almost done. Seems like we got rid of most of the big stuff. I'm gonna use the cotton swab to clean close to that trackpad board to be more careful. I 
I will use the cloth to remove the last annoying bits and bobs. Okay guys, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it much more cleaner than that to be honest. And it's not a plate, you're not gonna eat out of it, so it doesn't have to be like sterile, it has to be clean enough. That looks pretty good. Okay guys, so now before we fit the new battery in, we're gonna put the speakers back in. So we will make sure that the battery will align with the speakers nicely. So let's start with the left one. We just need to put it back in, making sure that this cable is tucked in nicely here. Let's take the right speaker. You need to make sure to tilt it back a little bit so this cable here, over here, goes underneath this metal screw mount. Okay, it's in and now let's pop the speaker connector back in. Okay, and now we can put the screws back in. Obviously we're not gonna tighten the screws all the way because we still want some wiggle room to fit the battery. I had them separated so I know which one goes where. Now the corner screws. Now those two screws at the top. Okay, and now we can take the battery. So this is our new battery from iFixit. So let me get it out of the plastic case. Let me just double check if that's the correct one, so I'll just put it in. Okay, we need to put those side pieces underneath the speakers and then we need to align this plastic bit with this screw hole over here. We can take the battery, we can remove this adhesive cover, place your thumb on the battery and peel it up one section at the time just do it slowly not to damage the adhesive okay and do it sideways to avoid the battery layers from separating okay Almost there. There we have it. And now we can fit it in. So hold it just like that. Let me peel off the foil on the sides to make it easier. Okay. And Let's align the battery nicely. Make sure that this little plastic bit goes on top of the metal. Don't drop the battery until it's perfectly aligned. And try to avoid touching the adhesive. So the sides need to go underneath the speakers just like that and this little bob here should go on top of the metal thing so let me just scoop it out with the pry tool. Okay, both of the sides left and right went underneath the speaker. I have those on top of the metal and now I can slowly align the screw hole. So I need to move it slightly left and right to make sure that the little screw hole is actually aligning with the plastic. Okay, it looks like it's in. Okay, now we can drop our battery in. Let me put it up again slightly because I think we need to move it down a little bit. 
so it drops here as well. Okay. Now I can press on the battery and let the adhesive to connect to the sashi. Okay, perfect. And now let's take the battery screw, let's take the T5 screwdriver and let's attach the battery screw. And now when the battery is fitted correctly, I can fasten all of the speaker screws. It's perfect. Now I can peel the battery connector back a little bit. Okay, so now we can peel off the plastic cover. Remember not to pull it up because you don't want the battery layers to separate. Just pull it sideways, like roll it off and do it slowly, section by section to avoid the battery layers from separating. Okay, so now we need to put the trackpad cable. Make sure that this little latch is up, not down. Grab the bottom of the cable and gently push it in to the socket. Okay, make sure that the trackpad cable goes in nicely. You're gonna see a little bit of the gold stuff sticking out, but that's, that is normal. There is this little plastic bits on the side, so we can use the spudger, the pry tool, to push it slightly in from the side. Okay, that's perfect. Now you can close this latch down. Align the connector on the other side and just click it in, in place. And then when it's connected from both sides, then you can press on it. There is some here let me just and now you can reattach that little metal plate that is securing the trackpad cable you want to put it back okay we take our t5 screwdriver and let's put that screws back in okay let's Tighten the screws. Don't overdo it because you don't want to break the screw. Be reasonable with the force. The last thing that we need to do is we need to plug the battery in in order to do that. So basically to pull it back, push it down and then you can connect the battery again. Align one of the corners and then push it down until you hear a click. And then you know that the battery is connected. Okay, so we take our bottom cover and we put it back. Okay, let's change the screwdriver to our P5. The short screws goes here at the top next to the hinge. Okay. Now we can the foil is dry, it means that we didn't have any spillage. Okay, so now we're gonna do the PRAM and SMC reset. So in order to do that we need to plug the charger. Okay. The battery went to orange, that's a good sign, it means that the battery is charging. Okay, so now we press Control Option Shift on the left side and we press the power button and the light on the charger should go to green and then go to orange again. So now we know that the SMC reset is done. Okay, so now we're gonna do the PRAM reset, so we need to power it on and then we need to hold the command option P and R on the keyboard. So let's power on command option P and R and hold it. And when you hear the noise a second time, then you know you did the PRAM reset correctly. It's important because it's resetting all the settings of the fans and the keyboard light and all that stuff. Okay, and now as you can see on the screen, the system is booting. The MacBook is working fine. Now we can unplug the charger to see if it's working on the battery. And it does work on the battery. 
the battery is 38%. So now in order to reset the battery, you should keep it plugged until it reaches 100%. Then you should charge it for at least two more hours, maybe even three hours. And then you can unplug it. You can use your computer normally until the battery drains out completely and then you should uh, charge it again to 100% but without using it at all and that's how we're gonna reset your battery and you're gonna be able to use it and we can take our old battery and throw it away you don't throw it to the bin you just need to go to the special place to recycle it you can go to tesco they usually have these bins for batteries you can just slide it through the slot there or you can go to like a phone repair center or computer repair center and ask them to throw it to the bin for you so yeah remember to recycle your old battery okay guys that's gonna be it for today's vlog i hope you managed to change the battery without any issues if you found the information useful make sure to leave the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because there is more content on the way and see you in the next one